Hey everyone, Gil Gross here post-match. Roger Federer versus Adrian Manorino, round one, Wimbledon 2021. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video in three, two, one. Roger Federer goes down two sets to one, but ultimately Manorino slips, falls, and has to retire in a extremely difficult to watch development for uh, a veteran in Manorino who really deserves better and played great and did great to put himself in a position to attempt to pull off this upset over Federer in the first round at Wimbledon. Uh, ultimately, the, the result is not what I'm going to focus on here for, for this video, obviously, because the result doesn't really tell us much. You can't draw much from it. Roger Federer had all the momentum in the fourth set. It was likely going five. I'm not going to talk about what I think would have happened because that is truly meaningless to the highest degree. It is tennis. Who knows what would have happened? Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to find out. I think the fifth set would have been very illuminating and very intriguing. And I think we were all robbed, the viewers and Adrian Manorino, and maybe even Roger Federer was robbed because it could have been a positive experience for him. Uh, even though he saves some time on the court. Uh, ultimately, I will talk about Federer's performance. I will talk about Manorino as a player and kind of some of the things that that he does well because he's such a fascinating player. I feel like he's one of those players who is so unique that I often use him as an example when I'm talking about tactical stuff uh, you know, on Monday Match Analysis and stuff. Um, but let me start with Federer. I want to talk about energy. I want to talk about momentum and confidence. And one of the things that makes the best tennis players so great is that is it is very difficult to break their confidence. And confidence can be an overarching term. It can be, or it can be very concentrated. And in this case, Roger Federer, after the first set, went into a horrible rut on a very specific shot on his forehand. His forehand became an absolute mess, an absolute liability. And let's be real, and I ta I've talked about this many, many times, uh, especially in 2018 when Federer injured his hand and didn't hit his forehand well. And throughout the entire 2018 season, it was basically like, I don't know what to say about Roger Federer and his game. If, if he's not going to hit his forehand well, he's not going to be a great player. And it's, very, it's, it's as simple as that because all of his weapons, from his backhand to his movement— to his serve, to his variety, all of these things that Roger Federer does well, it's all about setting up the forehand. That's really what all paths lead to a little bit uh, less, a little bit less so than Nadal, but not by much. I think Nadal is a little bit more heavy leaning on the forehand, but Federer is right there. He, it's really, he is as well. So, if he's not going to hit his forehand well, he's not going to be playing well, plain and simple. If, you know, he's never going to serve enough aces to make up for the fact that his forehand is not firing. He's never going to hit his backhand well enough to make up for his forehand. It's pretty much not going to happen. So in the second set and the third set, that's what happened. In the second set, I, uh, I have um, 13, no, excuse me, 12 unforced errors on the forehand and one winner which came on a drop shot on the forehand side in the second set. The forehand lost Roger Federer the tie break. It lost him chances to get the break early in the second set. And then in the third set, it began to get better. And in the fourth set, uh, in the first game, he played a very close opening service game. And on add-in, first game of the fourth set, Federer played what was probably his best point of the match, strung together great shots, hit multiple excellent forehands in the point, finished with a volley, ovation from the crowd at the changeover, and the, the energy of the entire match changed. And Federer became, you know, got into a, got into a zone and looked to shorten points actually upped his forehand aggression. And I know that might sound counterintuitive for someone who is struggling with the forehand. Why would you play it more aggressively? But hey, it helped the shot. That mindset adjustment and it injecting some anger into his forehands. And instead of hoping that he could string together a couple good ones, hitting it as an approach shot 
and being ultra aggressive on it actually helped its effectiveness and helped him put it in the court. Um, again, counterintuitive, but that's what happened. He shortened the points. He started to impose himself on Manorino and make Manorino the uncomfortable player. Instead of Roger Federer having to sit back and trying to trade his forehand effectively, trying to build points with his forehand effectively, and really unable to do it, credit to some of the things Manorino does well. He hits very, very deep. He has tremendous depth. His ball stays very low because it's very flat, and he rarely misses. He plays so clean, and he never gets tired. Manorino, in many ways, is a total nightmare to play. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of finishing power, but on grass, on on that kind of surface, and against Federer, he doesn't need finishing power. All he needs to do is extract the errors from Federer. And just, just by keeping the ball very deep in the court and hitting that piercing backhand cross court, he gave Federer's forehand absolute fits. Uh, but Federer found it. What's concerning for Federer is that he cannot go that long without finding confidence. And his confidence needs to be more dynamite than it was in this match. He can't, he can't go two full sets without forehand confidence. It's, it's just, it means he's not there. It means he's, it's not at his best. Now, maybe he goes the rest of the tournament and that doesn't happen again. All I'm saying is that shouldn't happen. And against a Roger Federer at his best, that doesn't happen. Again, what makes a player like Roger Federer or any player at his level so great is because, one, it's very hard to break the confidence. And if you do break it, normally the, the cold streak, the slump, doesn't last that long. It might last a game. It might last 10 minutes. But this lasted about an hour and a half. It was very bad and very difficult for Federer to get out of that rut. With all credit to Adrian Manorino, who played so clean, who didn't miss. Uh, another dynamic I want to point out that worked in favor of Manorino, and let's talk about the Roger Federer serve, uh, just to talk about the serve return dynamic a little bit. In the first set, Federer got off to a terrible start on his serve, but then started rolling on the serve and put a lot of pressure on Manorino's serve for the remainder of the first set because he started to serve really, really well. Found the serve again in the fourth set. Started to serve his best percentage of the match in the fourth set. Um, but it wasn't a, a, another another match where I don't think Federer served well for, for most of it. And a lot of that had to do with the, the lack of effectiveness he was getting off of his wide serve on the deuce side especially. It was a, a joke how ineffective it was. And the reason it really came to, you know, a, a glaring head was that Manorino, with the same serve, only on the ad side because he's a lefty, Manorino was loving that serve and getting great effectiveness out of it. But when Federer was serving wide on the deuce side, Manorino was basically connecting beautifully on backhand down-the-line returns. And that, of course, goes to the Federer backhand. Um, sometimes, sometimes he wouldn't hit it down the line. And again, he was connecting so cleanly on that backhand return when Federer served wide slice serve on the deuce. It was a big problem. And when Manorino served the same side, uh, the same serve out wide on the ad side, Federer was struggling to just hit backhand slice back. You know, those, I don't want to call it a block return. So it wasn't really blocking it. He's kind of chopping it back. And Manorino was getting really good looks at it or getting service winners from it and outserved Roger Federer. I just want to point out specifically a game in the fourth set, which was after Federer gets the break back, uh, Manorino breaks back at one all, one all in the fourth set. And if you don't believe me that Federer didn't serve well in this game or that this serve is still a problem, just look at that one all game where the serve, four points in a row, gets punished punished and Federer can't afford that on grass um, because Manorino goes the rest of the fourth set playing and serving brilliantly so well it was it was Manorino's best play of the match was in the fourth set because Federer's forehand wasn't quite so off the rails 
towards the end especially. But Manorino was up a break because Federer at that, at, in that game got his serve bullied on a grass court at one all. Love all. Um, or you know what? It wasn't one all. Excuse me. It was uh, it was one. Why am I why am I losing this in my notes? Um, oh, that's because I'm on the fourth set. Aha! It was two three at two three in the third set. Um, Federer serves it wide. Manorino hits a beautiful backhand down the line return, and um, and Federer misses the backhand, the first backhand. Love fifteen. Manorino pounds a deep. Uh, pounds deep cross court backhands over and over again after a solid return. You know, again the deep cross court backhand really bothering the Federer forehand, and Federer looks to change down the line and does it miserably, misses by a lot. Uh, Love thirty backhand cross court return winner by Manorino, a return winner, and then Love forty crushed forehand return up the middle draws the error. That's three returns by Manorino in one game that Federer does not make the next ball back, does not make his second ball back. So I know it's one game and I'm nitpicking, but that was the break. That lost Federer the fourth set, and that shouldn't really ever happen on grass to Roger Federer. He should never get his serve, you know, so easily handled. But in the fourth set, Federer was awesome and just found an energy about him that was tremendous and lethal, and he has more weapons than Manorino and more finishing power. And the forehand was firing, and he had eight forehand winners when the um, in the fourth set. And I think he had like four unforced errors. I mean, how different is that? And he was coming forward. And by the way, his volleys were really good, and it was a great tactic against Manorino when he could come in, which was rare because Manorino just doesn't drop the ball short. He's really good at keeping the ball deep in the court. But when Federer had a chance to come in, he was incredibly effective at the net. He was winning like 80, I think north of 80% of his net points. Uh, and Manorino, his passing shots are a little bit flat. So it gives Federer good looks at volleys often. And it was it was great tennis by Federer in the fourth set. If he continued that, he would have won the fifth. So um, it was an interesting match where... You know, Federer, the forehand went totally off the rails. It gave him no chance. Manorino's wide serve was working. Federer's wide serve was was not working. Um, through one set, it seemed very normal. Where you know it was pretty, um, it was pretty kind of routine for Federer in the sense that Manorino was challenging him. By the way, the soft stuff by Federer really worked well in the first set. Uh, the the backhand slice and stuff. I don't want to get into it. Again, Manorino's flat hitting, uh, really good, bringing him forward, a good play, similar to, to Murray Vasilishvili, but for a different reason because Manorino actually has good hands, but he 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 has no topspin. So if you uh, if you bring him inside the baseline, make him play short balls, very awkward. Uh, Manorino only goes cross court on his uh, off of Federer's cross court backhand slice. So. Federer took advantage of that and played a lot of good drop shots and did that in 4-5 on the set point. Uh, chip and pass by by Federer from the baseline. Drew Manorino in the classic Federer play. Backhand pass to follow. Uh, you know, good by Federer for the first set. And uh, I don't know. You know, Federer needs to do a couple things better. He cannot have his confidence broken so easily. He cannot slump for that long a period on his forehand. He still needs to serve better. Uh, but there were also some, you know, he showed that in the in the moments where he was right, he showed why he's the better player than Adrian Manorino. So Federer moves on. Second round, he will face Richard Gazquet. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.